Good morning. It is Tech Talk Today, episode 254. My name is Chris. And I'm Angela. And by morning, I mean afternoon. I really do. But uh, you know what? You don't care you, at listening at home or wherever you're listening. We have a great show lined up for you today for 254. Some interesting stories that all kind of connect together. And to help us bust through that, we've armed the Mumble Room with our best people. Time appropriate greetings, Mumble Room. Good night. Time Good appropriate night. greetings. Hello. Hello. This is our Tech Talk Today crew today, and they're going to help us break all this down. So let's start with like the first story that has security ramifications. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There is a lot of good news to go through today, but I, in my opinion, the news is slowing down in August, right before you hit August, and then as we arrive and we crested August, August is the worst month for tech news, is the worst. So we dug around, and we actually found some interesting bits. This first one's kind of important. It's about a new Trojan that is affecting Android devices. <gasps> what? <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and the issue is, is that there's like demo kits and stuff like that already on underground forms. So a new uh, potent Android torsion, as a CSO magazine is saying, uh, has been leaked on several underground forms and making it available for free to less resourceful cyber criminals who are likely to use it in attacks. The Trojan app is called SpyNote, and it allows hackers to steal users' messages and contacts, listen in on calls, record audio, and use a, you know, basically not just call audio, but anything that uses the built-in microphone, and control the device's cameras and even make calls. According to researchers from Palo Alto Networks, Spy, Spy Note does not even require root access, but does prompt the user for a long list of permissions on installation. So wait, so why would somebody go get an app called Spy Note? Well, ah, great question. So here's the thing. What they're actually selling is a builder for Windows. And ah. it's, it is, uh, it, al- it uses Spy Note to generate an Android application that has Spy Note embedded in it. Ah. Oh, wow. And it allows you to t- change all the things like the names and, and what servers it connects to, change all the variables, so that way you can brand it yourself with your own logo, your own name, and your own control servers that it connects to. Hmm. So it's like a, it's a ready-to-go kit. Yep. And then you use this builder that they're selling, and you integrate in the SpyNote APK into that. Now, from time to time, that actually has gotten past the play, uh, the play screen that like checks for all that kind of stuff. But most of the time, all of these malicious uh, Android infections come from side-loaded applications "Quote unquote unknown sources in Android parlance." So this attacks devs. No, this is for people to buy off of. So okay, here's here's actually your question is you're, what you're poking at is what I actually find to be more interesting about this story than the story itself. Every time something like Spynote or anything like this comes out, we learn more about the underground network that makes this possible. So the real story here is the forums out there and really marketplaces where. Hackers have ratings and and uh, reviews, just like an Amazon seller might or an eBay seller. Mm-hmm. And you go in, you go into these forums or these whatever you want to call them, and you can purchase or, in some cases, for free, download these ready to go, ready baked tool sets. That you don't even really have to be a developer; you just have to kind of know how to plug things together. And you download this application; it assembles it for you. Hmm. And then you try to get it in the Play Store, or you try to put it somewhere where users might be downloading applications that they're going to sideload. Or you try to come up with a way to deliver it to Android users to get them to install it. Because you have to allow all the permissions, it's not as like a big deal. But a lot of times people just hit yes on that kind of stuff, right. especially average end users. Yeah. So Spy Note, we might be hearing more about it in the future, but uh, right now I guess it's, it's actually making its way around the web. Palo Alto Networks also has been one of the companies that's been following a lot of this Android stuff, which I – yeah. It is also, it's interesting the way they ready-bake this, too. Like, they just package it all up. Like, they don't just find the exploit anymore or come up with theoretical ways to take advantage of it. They actually go through the trouble of creating a builder application that allows you to rebrand this thing. Mm -hmm. It's just really getting to a pretty sophisticated level. I find that to be fascinating. Mumble Room, any thoughts on Android malware before we move on to another story? Yeah, Chris, uh, you know, the Android development environment, not just the malware, always struck me as something apart from traditional Linux and open source just because, you know, people didn't use real names. There was a lot of pseudonyms involved. Um, you know, you're always, you know, um, putting your stuff out there for reputation. Um, and this kind of dark underground of the malware just uh, seems really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's not just for Android malware. It's for every operating system under the planet, basically anything that connects to a network and more. Um, and to see them 
to see it continue to grow and build makes me think that eventually we'll probably also hear about some big crackdown by the FBI or something like that. So keep our eyes peeled for that. All right, so now you're going to start to see the thread in the news this week. There's one company making a lot of news. Earnings calls came out, and interesting details were revealed about the success of Chromecast. Google has sold 30 million Chromecasts, 5 million in just the past two months. You really can't argue with the price on the Chromecast either. We have one here in the studio. Uh, It's like 35 bucks, and it allows you to remotely send video and audio from an Android device to your TV. Um, Now, the interesting part is, is how this all came to be revealed, because Google didn't just offer this information up at first. On an earnings call earlier this week, Alphabet announced $21.6 billion in revenue for Q2 2016, and Google's CEO, Sundar Pichai, responded to a question regarding Google's own strategies, including strategies around hardware. That's where it got interesting. While responding to questions regarding the hardware strategy, Pichai revealed that the company has shipped the 30 million Chromecast number. That's incredible. They've been selling since 2013. This includes, of course, the original Chromecast, the 2015 refresh, and the Chromecast audio all which have been very popular. Chromecast is one of these um, one of these devices too that they're building into some of their products. Mm-hmm. So the Shield TV that I reviewed on last on Sunday um, has Chrome, and, and Noah's does too, I believe, has Chromecast capabilities built into it. So you don't even have to buy the separate Chromecast unit. If you just get an Android TV set top box, you get you also get Chromecast. So I'll tell you how I use it here at the studio. Instead of having to have um, some big entertainment thing hooked up to the TV out there or whatever. Except, you know, Roku's not that big. Right, right, right. right it's, it's a competitive... Yeah, it, you, you could... you you could. I think it doesn't... I don't think it replaces Roku. I think you could... I think very easily you could have a Roku... Supplemental. Yeah, and a Chromecast. Yeah. On yeah. One well, on it's one like a, having yeah. Hulu and Netflix as a streaming device. So the, the Roku is really great for watching your Netflix and uh, your Hulus and stuff like that, but the Chromecast is really great... I mean, it's, it's, it's the best way to group YouTube because everybody on the network, on the Wi-Fi network, can see your Chromecast, and you can each individually from your phones add stuff to a, to a master playlist mm-hmm. that the room shares, mm-hmm. and so you can queue up. So like when we're doing Linux Fest, the guys are sitting in the living room, and they're all queuing up different YouTube nice. videos, and they all get to sit around and talk about them. Uh, and in here, I have a Chromecast extension in, in Chrome, the browser, mm-hmm. and I can pull up Plex videos on this computer and I can Chromecast them to the TV without having to buy a separate piece of hardware out there. So when the kids are over and they want to watch something on the TV, right. I just go in here and I play and I control it from here and it's, it's nice. nice and easy. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool in that sense. And it's only $35 to get a Chromecast and they're building it into stuff. So it's a pretty competitive product. Um, and I would just love to see something come along in the open source space. And Mozilla worked on it for a little bit that was service agnostic, that was – didn't, wasn't a tied to your Google account. My main gripe with the Chromecast is it's not done over your LAN. When I initiate a YouTube play, it doesn't just send the YouTube URL to the Chromecast over my Wi-Fi network. It sends it up to a Google server, and then the Google servers are talking to the Chromecast device and telling it what to do. It's not a one-to-one relationship. There's a middleman between my phone and my TV, and when the Internet goes down, you can't talk to your Chromecast. Right. So there is some there is some support for local seems stuff. Like it sh- yeah, it seems like it should be able to use there is the some. local network. But there is some, but to do all yeah. the to take advantage of all of the features of Chromecast, you have to have an internet connection and a Google account and your phone and your Chromecast have to be on the same account. And mm-hmm. uh, I would and I would love to see somebody come up with something. You plug into the TV; it's an HDMI stick, and it's maybe you could even use Chromecast protocol somehow or something because it's getting built into so many apps now. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a machine. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on Chromecast before moving on? Okay. I think one day um, we'll just be referring to TVs as dump screen terminals or yeah. something like that, just hooking up just multiple media devices so to whatever you want. WW, by that, are you inferring that uh, eventually the TV makers are going to give up on this whole smart TV, TV as a platform, TV running apps thing? Uh, I'm kind of hoping so because if they're not updating it and they're not doing it right, then eventually – some company that makes it painless to update makes this all a smooth process will eventually take over or maybe even integrate their technologies into Mm. the maker's tv and that way the maker doesn't have to worry about that part someone else does but then you would still have maybe some security concerns to worry about yeah you know just one company I, i seem to recall um a very bold statement by google like two years ago that Android TV, or whatever they called it at the time, would be built into a lot of TVs by the end of summer. 
this is like two years, three years ago, and it never happened. But it seems like an obvious platform choice for televisions. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, tell, I think part of it is they don't want to give that power to Google. And so there may be somebody else that comes along and creates. I would love to have seen another like Linux OS or something. My dad called me like an hour ago and was telling me he he was like, "Do you have a smart TV?" I was like, what? <laughs> what do you what? what do you mean what by that? What kind of question dad? is you know, that? Anyway. Not, not something you expect coming from dad, right? <laughs> yeah. So he was telling me about how he lowered his direct TV plan to as low as he can get, which basically means infomercials, you know, daytime TV soap opera stuff, and uh, something. I else. love That's that he's coming at you're like, Dad, I am so far beyond this. Oh no, no. He so he lowered it to get it to the minimum possible. And then in three months, when his contract is up, he plans to cancel it, right? Because he's his uh, TV viewing is Hulu, Netflix, and now Pluto TV, which um, uh, I well I didn't know about until until he told me. But I'm trying to get our stuff on there too. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's like a video IP TV type thing or Pluto TV. Is that what's yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. There's um there's an app. Uh, if kind of fits with Jupiter Broadcasting. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Let's go take a look. Yeah. Pluto TV, huh? Yeah, it shows up in my Google Auto Complete. Corporate.pluto TV. That's odd. That's an odd uh, URL. Free TV is here. Well, I'll take a look at it. That's yeah. interesting. I wonder if anybody in and the chat scroll down like, just a little bit because it shows like. Um, it's yeah. like actually has like a TV broadcast schedule. Yeah, it's uh, scroll down a little more. It okay. like shows that it's uh, available for like every there right there free TV to all your devices, which is that can't be a thing though. I don't know. We'll see. Because like Sling TV is barely a thing and they're legit. I don't, that's interesting. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Pluto TV, if you guys, or if anybody has any experience with it. Um, yeah, the whole cord cutting thing is a really interesting like challenge because right now I think there's a lot, people feel a lot of pressure to maybe, well, I'm sure with, if you don't follow sports, it's a lot easier to cut the cord. But yep. if you're a little bit of a news follower, when the elections start heating up, it's really hard not to be able to tune into live television and see what's going on. So it's always kind of neat if you can find a service like Sling TV or maybe maybe Pluto. I don't know. Uh, it's in the Chrome Web Store too, huh? Chaotic. Interesting. Well, let's see the lineup. They have a they have a lineup here. Oh, it's a PDF download. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, the channel listening. I think um, one forty two or one twenty four is the tech. Look at them. They say they have NBC News, uh, RT, uh, the Young Turks, Newsy. Okay, so it's a lot of online streaming stuff. CNET. Essentially, what they look like they have done is automated all of the online sources of content. I'm just guessing. And they've audited their own, like, music, streaming. But, uh, like, Science TV and NASA TV. Uh, there's a Steve Jobs channel. Wow. Yeah, channel 728. <laughs> um, a lot of this stuff you can get online. And I'll, I find that to be an interesting idea, though. And there's a lot of different ways to crack that particular one. Well, so this next story um, is another Google story that I'm really actually pretty happy about. You do have to be an Android user to take advantage of it, but Google account sign-in notifications are now going to be sent directly to your Android device. This is a really nice feature that Google does. It says, hey, somebody from a new browser at a weird IP logged into your account, and they send you an email. But then it just gets tucked away in one of your, if you use Gmail, right. in one of your update tabs, and you never see it. So now what they're going to do is they're going to send a push notification to your Android device. And when you pull down the notification, there will actually be a link to review your account activity immediately. Nice. nice. Nice, yep. nice. This um, is just a small update that makes these kinds of things that Google does feel a little more trustworthy. Apple's been doing, or you know, Apple does that too. Like when a oh yeah, you they do, don't it they? It is push notification, yeah. Yeah, and it's like modal too. It like takes over your whole screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so this is just while we're on the tour, while we're giving Google some good guy points. Ninety percent of <laughs> YouTube and Google Calendar connections are now encrypted with HTTPS. That's pretty nice. It's been a two-year challenge to get YouTube encrypted, and migrating the Google Global Cache CDN to HTTPS was a huge engineering feat, they say. Google did not have to add more resources and machines to uh, encrypt video uh, due to hardware acceleration for AES, I guess. Hmm. In fact, only 97% of YouTube connections are encrypted as a result of some devices not fully supporting HTTPS over time. They think this will be improved, though. And look at them. Getting HTTPS everywhere is really nice. And I don't know, sure, maybe it's in response to uh, just co just to consumer demand, but more secure connections is better for everybody. Yep. Uh, all right. Now, before we get off the Google topic, if there was any bits there that the mumber wanted to pick up, you guys are welcome to. But yeah, I agree with WW. Thank you to the Google engineers for working so hard on that. And I feel like it's sort of one of those things they don't get credit for enough when they do p pull off those things. Even if it limits some of the deep packet inspection that's going on out there. It does, doesn't it? It does, yes. And those, those corporate networks love their deep packet inspection. So do other guys. 
Good guy, Google for a day. <laughs> That's why. All right, now Wait, let's shift gears. Oh, go ahead. Um, is it is it Google like doing something with two factor authentication, or is that, or am I thinking of another company? Um, do you mean like where they're changing it to send an approve a prompt to the devices? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think they think are. Yeah, yeah, I think they're gonna go do. I, I don't know if anybody out there has used the LastPass authenticator, but they re, they recently released their own two factor authenticator for your phone. And what's slick about it is it just sends a push notification, at least on Android. It sends a push notification to your phone asking if you want to do a two factor approval right there. No code stuff you have to worry about, um, and it's really quick. It makes signing in the LastPass a lot faster. And I'd love to see Google. Because it's your, something you have, your phone, and something you know, your password. You know what is interesting is about this whole, like, email you if you if somebody logged into your email, is you you attacked it from the aspect of it'll just get lost in their auto-sorting tab thingy. But, like, I've signed into my mom's email, and it's sent the email saying that I signed into it. I can just delete it. <laughs> that's true. That's where this mobile uh, second that's a great step point. really works. You know, in fact, yeah, I'm, if you're in the email, I mean... And Hello. you know the other way. You get this, it right away. The other the other reason why this will be somewhat annoying for me, and I do what you just said, is I sign in to a lot of different Google accounts in a private session because I, I don't want to be signed in all these different Google accounts for sure. shows and whatnot. And so every time I do that, oh. it creates an entry saying a new browser is signed in. Right. So that'll be a push notification I get every single time. Wow. Yeah, and I just go in there after I've signed in. One of the first things I do after I've signed in is I delete the email that says a new account or a new browser signed in because I just don't. That doesn't yeah. need to be in there. Yeah. So that's the first right? thing I do. <laughs> but they do actually, just a pro tip, if you, if you scroll down to the bottom of Gmail, there is a link somewhere down there, at least it used to be, where you can see all of the login sessions and the location they signed in from, and you can review them. Mm -hmm. So if you ever do get a little, uh, you know, a little suspicious. Yep. Now, a lot of people, when you talk about uh, buying laptop hardware, a lot of people will say, well, Macs are really well built. They're kind of expensive, though. And then they'll start talking about Lenovo's or whatever, right? There's like a sequence that the conversation goes through, and everybody <laughs> knows it. <laughs> yep. And uh, I think you pronounce it, uh, oh boy. Xiaomi? No, no, no. It's like, I think it's Yaomei. Oh. Yeah. How do you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yaomei, the uh, Chinese company, X-I-A-O-M-I. -I. Sure, Xiaomi. Xiaomi, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, me, right. Yeah, it's got, the Andy has a me sound. Xiaomi uh, takes on the MacBook with a $750 Mi Notebook Air. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're getting sued already, right? <laughs> yeah. The, I think Tim Cook is writing out the papers right now. Right. But check out the details. Uh, this is so uh, they're known for smartphones, and they're actually known for decent uh, iPhone competing smartphones too. They're like Apple's number one competitor over in China. Ah. And uh, they make a. They're making. They're going to make. They're going to start making two different sized laptops. A 13.3 inch version for seven hundred and fifty dollars, and they're claiming. You know, they're going for MacBook build quality here. It has a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i5 6200U processor, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and NVIDIA GeForce 940MX GPU, a 256 gigabyte PCIe SSD storage with a factory expandable SATA SSD slot. Wow. That's, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, and an 802.11 AC Wi-Fi built in, of course, and they're claiming on the 13-inch version 9.5 hours of battery life. But if you want something smaller... They're going to have a machine with, they're also claiming the same build quality, but just lower specs and a smaller screen, $525. Now we're kind of getting into like, well, this is cheaper than a Chromebook Pixel, and it's got, you know, this is a full laptop that you could install Linux or Windows, uh, but it's a 12.5-inch <laughs> model, and it has an Intel Core M3 processor with integrated graphics. That's your big hit there. Four gigabytes of RAM. No word on in this article if you could expand it yourself. 128 gigabytes of SSD storage and 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. And they're claiming with this one, with the lower-end parts that use less power, 11.5 hours of battery life. Wow. That's If you even got half that, yeah, that would be very. I'd be very happy with that. So both devices have huh. one USB Type 2 port for charging. So wait, wait, Tim Cook has already ordered one too, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe the <laughs> guys, compare. maybe they they could just look at this at Apple and try to figure out how they're doing this. Right. Uh, maybe it's that Chinese right. labor. Let's wait. not sue them yet. Let's just go ahead and replicate it. Yeah, let's yeah. buy a couple first. <laughs> uh, the USB Type C port for charging, like the MacBook uh, has, two USB 3.0 Type A ports. Hey, oh, multiple ports there. An HDMI port and a headphone jack and the aluminum body. Mm-hmm. Uh, woo. Comes in gold and silver. Ooh, sound. Uh, is it rose gold or is it regular? I don't know. Gold? It just know wouldn't that be funny? And it also has a Jeez. backlit keyboard. Wow. And look at that big trackpad. It That's even, great. It even has the indent in front of the trackpad like the MacBook does. The screen, for great. screen dimensions are weird. God, that looks exactly like a freaking MacBook. Look at that thing. Mm. 
yeah, 13.5 and like 12.5, I think. Or, yeah, 12.5 and 13.3. Hmm. I, you know what? Uh, it kind of looked like she was on the toilet. <laughs> it does, huh? That is a weird one. <laughs> look at how uh, look how thin that is, though. Classy, though, yeah. That is really classy looking. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to that. What book was that? Was that an atlas? Design oh, Awards. Design Awards. Okay, mm, like, oh, it's like, see what they're, see what they're yeah. implying there. That's uh, funny. Yeah. Now, of course, they're going to ship it with Windows 10, but I'd rip Windows off that and put Linux on that thing. Ugh, yeah. I, this I am very excited about, actually, because I think if anybody, if anybody could pull this off, I think it's, I think it's them. They so have some good build quality. Under approximately, there. what is the uh, cost of an equivalent Apple laptop? Let's look. Or... Looks now. Now, bear in mind, there's no re- word on release in the U.S. market yet. But uh, I, I actually think, I think uh, Xiaomi is uh, working towards that pretty aggressively, mm-hmm. kind of behind the scenes. So let's go take a look. We'll go over to Apple.com/slash/Mac. And so we'd be comparing, I think, this to the MacBook. Okay. Well, except for the MacBook only has one port total. Well, let's take a look. Let's take wow. a look. Wow, is that what they're at now? Well, first, for, for first the they Ma- take our CD wrong. <laughs> for the you know, like, you care. <laughs> the I do. Wrong. I can't burn a CD anymore. <laughs> oh, I have used the stupid USB one that has to plug in three different oh, ways in order to it's burn a so CD. So horrible. Um, so they have uh, uh, they on the MacBook. It's one USB port. On the other ones, they have more ports. Okay. So let's go with silver, um, 256 gigabyte uh, PCIe, 1.1 gigahertz dual core, which is actually, this is worse than the high-end one, their, their $750 one. Mm-hmm. This is not an i5 processor. This is the M3 processor, and it has the same amount of RAM, so it has worse graphics and a worse CPU from okay. Apple, and it is $1,300. Okay. And so the Xiaomi one is... Uh, Seven hundred and fifty dollars for more machine, right. so, for much more. Actually, not only not only for two point three gigahertz Intel Core i five, but also for a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce nine forty, hmm. for way less money. That's a big difference, right? But there. what does it mean? You know, five hundred dollars more and uh, potentially better customer service, a physical well, store. Well, definitely walk in. in the U.S., right? That's for sure. You can't. Yeah. I mean, you can't even. They'll probably raise it to. I mean, that's just let's, what let's you do. It. You do eleven hundred or twelve hundred to come right up underneath the MacBook. Let's go. Let's compare it to battery. Let's go battery to battery. So Mac. Let's go look at the MacBook Air, which is uh, has more ports. It's a little more competitive. Nine hours and twelve hours. I feel like the Xiaomi one is more targeting the MacBook. But let's take a look at this. So the MacBook Air, I think, might be closer. Uh, we can get uh, 1.6 gigahertz with 256 gigabytes of storage. Okay. It starts at 1,099. So that's like still way worse graphics though. The HD uh, what did yeah. that did that say HD 4,000? That can't be accurate. Oh, that, and that's it's not 11 possible. inch as well. It's not 13. Okay. So it has oh that's true. It is smaller too. It has the this has the Intel HD graphics 6,000, which is still slower than the Nvidia, mm-hmm. and it only has four gigs of RAM instead of the eight gigs of RAM, mm-hmm. and it starts at really 1,100 dollars. Right. So the yeah. Seven hundred fifty, even for that, and then and then five twenty five for the lower end one, which is spec like the MacBook, is a really great deal. So they might have a hit on their hands if the build quality works out and they don't uh, slip in uh, Chinese spy software. Then uh, they'd probably be good. <laughs> By the way, while we were chatting, Rikai found local cast. You can stream video to your Chromecast from your computer. I'll link that in the show notes. Show notes. This might be a nice way to do local broadcasting and play like videos from your local computer to your Chromecast. Nice. So yeah, I'll put a link. Thanks, Rikai. There's also one out there. That allows you to play videos in your Chrome web browser and then cra- and then cast them on over to the uh, what you call it to the Chromecast. But uh, this looks even better. It looks like it's nice and clean. So uh, it's also on GitHub. I put a link in the show notes for you guys. All right, and this one is really for you and me. Okay. Uh, and anybody else out there who has suffered with the incompetence and the bureaucracy and the complicated pricing plans of <gasps> Comcast, Washington State, our home state has sued Comcast. The whole state. Yeah, all of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it says it's, and here's the best line. It says it's sold near worthless service plans. Absolutely. Yeah. Who now, doesn't, who likes Comcast? Now, Nobody. unfortunately, they're not talking about internet service plans. Ah. But it's, but it, sh- it actually is so much more worse. It's so Comcast has been hustling people for this extra protection service mm-hmm. that does nothing. And only thing oh. it does is do give you all of basically the same services you would get as a Comcast customer. Wow. Uh, so Washington State Attorney General Bab Ferguson today announced <laughs> a $100 million consumer protection lawsuit against Comcastic, alleging that the nation's biggest cable company, a.k.a. a monopoly, engaged in a pattern of deceptive practices constituting more than 1.8 million individual violations of the Washington Consumer Protection Act. Comcast conduct affected about 500,000 customers who purchased the service protection plans in Washington. 
Ferguson said. State officials filed the lawsuit in King County Superior Court seeking re- that's how we talk in Washington, seeking <laughs> refunds from consumers. The lawsuit accuses Comcast of misleading 500,000 Washington cons- I'm sorry, Washington consumers and deceiving them into paying at least 73 million dollars in subscription fees over the last 5 years for a near worthless protection plan without disclosing its significant limitations. They uh, Washington alleges 1.8 million violations because Comcast made false claims regarding the scope of its service protection plans to the 700,000 customers and deceptively represented the scope of its customer guarantee to over 1.17 million customers. Comcast allegedly led customers to believe that they needed to buy a service protection plan to get services that were actually covered for free by the customer guarantee. Wow. Wow. Aren't they great? I have a quick clip here of Bella saying, it's called a hustle, sweetheart. (laughs) What? Let me see this. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's a hustle, sweetheart. You're getting hustled. (laughs) You are getting hustled. That's great. I want that. That is so good. I need that on the soundboard. (laughs) Yeah, you do. I really do. It's called a hustle, sweetheart. It's from from Zootopia. You should telegram that to me. Well, she was like, I want to watch Zootopia. And I'm like, okay, baby. And then she went, it's called a hustle, sweetheart. And I turned and I'm like... What? Yeah, that's a and line. And I was like, okay, yeah. do that again. <laughs> that, that is definitely a line. I want that on the soundboard. You got to telegram that to me. I will. All right. So I just, I sit here and I soak, I bask in appreciation for Washington for suing Comcast. Seriously. And Let's sue for all the things though. <laughs> you know, I wanted to just do a, we had some Comcast. We should do an update. Yeah. yeah. We've had we've had issues over and over again. Uh, so we'll. I wanted to just cover that really quickly. But before we jump in, let's get Ham in here. So Ham... You've suffered with the Comcast. You have a really unique internet setup out there to begin with. So uh, you're coming at it from like the complete opposite spectrum of Comcast because you're like all in on a totally indie internet setup where you're at. And then you got grandma on Comcast. It must be like banging your head against a wall. <laughs> I sure am. Yeah, um, I live out here in the middle of nowhere. And uh, but anyway, my grandma, she lives there in Portland and uh she has terrible internet and she has Comcast and I wanted to get it, see if she could get some different internet service. Well, I called uh, up a different company and they said, sorry, we can't give you internet because Comcast owns the rights for that area. Yep, so yep. there's not even any other competition. In yeah. The they buy out. Comcast. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that something? So, you know, I, now your, your ISP is like an independent operation, right? So you could it actually is, talk like a human being about actual problems. It is. I actually work for the guy now. Um, it's a wisp out here. I work for the guy, and so I can actually talk to him when I have problems. That's nice. See, that's a, see, that's a totally different world. Um, and it reminds me about that time we went out and uh, met Chris up at uh, Orcas Island. and uh, was, I think it was Orcas Island. And uh, he showed us his wisp setup out there for the, for the last anniversary episode. And it's just a totally different paradigm. Mm-hmm. Where, uh, and, yeah. Oh, man, I so, would love to see fiber competition come in North Ranger. So I called in every couple of weeks to Comcast to to complain about the how when we'd start streaming, it we couldn't. And it was causing so many so much crashing. Yeah, especially and, in the like afternoon. And unfortunately, it, I, I don't have enough knowledge to try to troubleshoot that with the gal. And the first thing they want to do is restart the router. Well, one time I called during last. And I'm like, no, don't do it. <laughs> you know, don't touch anything. You know, but I'm sick of this. And. Uh, so they gave me a hundred and fifty dollar credit, uh, but we pay two hundred and fifteen dollars a month. I yeah. mean, like it's we have a business account, and so yeah. there's a there is an SLA there. Yeah, and um, anyway, so finally they agreed to send a tech out here, and uh, you take over from here because I wasn't so actually here. The tech comes out, and uh, he's like, he, you know, it's so it's so uh, it's so hit and miss with these techs. You never know what you're gonna get, and uh, so Rika and I are bracing ourselves for <laughs> anything, mm-hmm. anything. And the guy gets here, and um, I start telling him, I said, well, here's what we're seeing. When we're broadcasting and we're running Skype or in, in about the middle of the day and, or, and you know, sometimes in the evening, our, our ping times out to, like, Google and whatnot, which we're always monitoring, they jump up from, let's see, right now it's at 8.94 milliseconds. And that's good. Nine milliseconds right now, uh, 13 milliseconds. That's the range we would normally see. Mm-hmm. But when this dropout problem would start to happen – the millisecond response time out to our external ping test sites, we get up to the 20s, then the 40s, then the 100s, and then we just drop off. And then we, we would drop packets, drop packets, drop packets, drop packets, drop packets, and then all of a sudden we get a response. And it'd be a response time of like 1,000 milliseconds. And then the next one would be 600 milliseconds, and then 50 milliseconds, and then 8 milliseconds. And then we just run at like, you know, our regular time over and over again. And uh, so the guy comes out here. I'm like, here's what we're seeing. Here's the data we've graphed because we've been running, you know, ping tests. 
And what we're wondering is if it is just afternoon congestion. Because this point right here, and we pointed to the Bothell IP, this point right here is where we seem to be getting all of our congestion. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's about, uh, I can't remember, 10,000 customers on your loop out here or something like that. Uh, I think we'd have a few reports. And, you know, a lot of those are businesses right here, and those business customers would notice that. First of all, that's bullshit. Because business customers are sitting there on their old crappy XP computers browsing <laughs> yeah, right. the web, and they don't—they don't need the type of. We're doing that we, real-time yeah. video streaming right. and, and 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 two-way conversations over Skype that are way more sensitive so, than playing Facebook games while you're killing time at a business computer. Right. So Give you lost a, a little bit of confidence. There. Yeah, I'm like, oh jeez. Oh, yeah. No. Oh no. And uh, he says, "Well, can you show me where the previous installer did his work?" And uh, he starts—he he starts looking at it, and he comes back in. He's like, uh, "Who who installed this?" I was like, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, the Comcast rep two and a half years ago that set it up for us. Mm-hmm. Are you saying a Comcast guy set this up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a Comcast guy. All right. Well, I got to go take a look at a few things. And um, he goes out, and he probably spends twenty five minutes at the front box in front of the in front of the studio, mm-hmm. and he replaces wiring that I guess was cracked and just was uh, like fifteen years old or something like that. Jeez. Which I guess the guy was supposed to replace when he did our original install. Right. He's like, yeah, okay, you're looking a lot better, but I'm still seeing some signal loss. And I'm like, hmm. Well, great that he can detect it. That's. A- <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, and, you know, it's just funny because I've actually heard the opposite. Back before we turned this into a studio, like mm-hmm. ages ago when we actually lived here, mm-hmm. I heard that we had too much signal and they had to put a, they had to turn it right. down. Right, yeah. Do you remember, remember that? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So now he's saying not enough signal. Why? Right. And so uh, I'm like, well, uh, there's this section here in the garage that we have a we have an attic up here, and there's some wires up there. The guy worked up there. He's like, well, I'll go up there and see if there's a splitter or something, he says. And I'm like, well, I, I don't think so. I mean, the Comcast guy went up there, and he specifically asked me if he could take out a splitter and replace it with a new wiring run. And I told him to do go ahead and do it. Yeah. And uh, uh, That like, sounds logical. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'm just going to take a look anyways. And I'm like, dude, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So he climbs up into the attic, and sure enough, are you kidding me? Yeah, some like 1985 cable splitter is up there in the, uh, not really that old, but yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing else plugged into it, just one end of the cable oh from the street. Oh my gosh. So Connecting. He, is, yeah. that, is it the cable that goes across the opening? Uh, that I think is the satellite run. that the, Or the microwave. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> he takes out the splitter and puts it in there and uh, comes back down and says, all right, well, I'm going to start running ping tests from my end. You guys keep running your ping tests from your end, and we'll see how it goes. And since then, it's been pretty solid. And, yeah, good. Uh, he was just speculating, you know, that when the network would get congested and we didn't have adequate signal, that it would look to us like dropouts. Right. So it seems to it seems to have improved. We're still having some issues, but I think that's just Comcast. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just how it goes. So uh, so, so minor, minor win there and minor resolution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, Enzo, you ready to kick it? Kick it! It is time for our Kickstarter of the week. And time flies when you're having fun in the uh, Tech Talk Today program, and you need a cool levitating clock to track it. That's right, a levitating clock with 48 backers. Oh, wow. You've already backed it, haven't uh, no, you? But I mean, like, this is I, right I, I, up your alley. It is so up my alley. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they, have, uh, they have a goal of $46,000. They've raised $24,000 have with you 18 days yet? to go. No, are you ready? Yeah. You ready? I mean, if you guys are watching. Here you go. It is the or levitating yeah. Nixel, or Nixie clock. That's these, those glass tubes. That wow. Have, yeah, it's, it I'd is. I'd be afraid of it exploding. But it's we've so been cool. designing and building unique Nixie devices for many years. Wow, he sounds convincing. Oh my About three gosh. years ago, I had an idea that led to our craziest project yet, suspending a fully functional Nixie clock in midair. Powering a few LEDs or a single small Nixie tube via induction coils is trivial, but could it power an entire clock? So it's levitating and uses induction to transfer the power. With a lot of work and a few prototypes, I managed to make my idea a reality. We need this in the studio over there, like the official studio clock. We yeah. present our levitated, wirelessly powered Nixie clock. <laughs> Isn't that great? Wow. Can you run your hand underneath it, do you suppose? Yeah, I think you could, yeah. Oh, look at him. He's bouncing it, yeah. Oh, is it levitating or is it opposite magnets? It might be, but either way, the effect. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, totally. And then you can rotate it. Wow. Spinning in a circle now. Yeah. I love how retro it is and futuristic at the same time. It's that perfect mix of 2016. Oh, and, and he took it off. Yeah. 
It has all the features you'd expect to find in a typical gravity-bound clock, but without the wires. This would be a recap point that doesn't make an amazing recording status light if you could wire that up somehow. Wow. You see how it's got blue LED lights underneath it too? Yeah. So it casts a blue glow as it hovers? Yeah. That's I, brilliant. Yeah. I bet in a dark room it would look really cool. On it would the look ceiling. amazing. Because you'd have the red glow of the yeah. pixie tubes, or nixie tubes, I guess they're called. Yeah, pixie. <laughs> I don't know. Get yourself a fairy. <laughs> no, yeah. I like how as soon as you put it over the induction coils too, it just lights right up. Man, that's like Star Trek stuff right there. It's like cancer. No, <laughs> just kidding. One day we'll all charge everything with induction charging. So Nixie Tubes, Steampunk, Levitation, presenting the world's first and only gravity-defying Nixie clock. And these guys have built other stuff, too. This isn't their first uh, project. I mean, this is so, so cool. Of course, to really get in at any reasonable uh, device, you're paying serious money. Like, you can you can pledge 20 bucks or even a buck. But really, to get up there, you're going to have to get 330 bucks, wow. 340 bucks, Jeez. and you get the experimental edition. Yeah, it's, yeah, man, it's not cheap. But it's so cool, Angie. This would be one it of those things cool. where, like, if we were, like, in full, like, let's just pimp out the studio mode, that would be. Yes. So, I, even though we can't actually back it, I am damn inclined yeah. to say that in theory, we should back it. We should do porn music. What do you think, Mumble Room? Well, hold on. We get, do we oh. got, what do you guys think? Anybody want to say nay? I mean, yeah, it's expensive. It is expensive. I'll give you that. They all like it. No? It's really uh, cool, but but I, mean, but I mean, how practical is it? Why uh, is it, you know, why? Well, do you ever look at what time it is? I mean, <laughs> that's how practical it is. <laughs> On my phone, I always use my phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, right? Uh, that is, I mean, it, it's art. It is. Really. I mean, it's in it's some ways. It's soothing. It's cooler, than a, it's cooler than a picture that you'd put on the wall, yeah. I think. I'd buy this over an Apple yeah. Watch. You'd, yeah, <laughs> buy it over a smartwatch or an Apple Watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so sounds like North Ranger's in. Ham raises the reasonable point, uh, but BC and WW, if you guys uh, have any thoughts, feel free to jump in. I, if I had Comcast spending money, I would probably <laughs> I would buy this. But this would be like this would be like my version of the grandfather clock because exactly. I would want no one like going around it like this is like a timepiece, but it's kind of like a art decorative could you imagine not touch it <laughs> could you imagine too like like a conversation when people come over to your place oh, yeah. you're like check out my levitating clock with yeah. the retro tubes yeah you know wwn is er, hello ladies do you like my clock yeah he's on to something maybe we should just cancel comcast for two months and buy it yeah <laughs> <laughs> there we go all right that officially makes it a winner that's right Now, if you want to fund it, you got to get over to Kickstarter because they still haven't made their goal with 18 days left to go. You can help them get to $46,000 if wow. you get one. Do me a solid. Put a JB sticker in the shot and Jeez, then take no a picture kidding. of this yes. thing. I want a selfie with the clock. I will send you, you the sticker. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations, guys. They won. Well, I like that. They're, they're a little tongue in cheek, too. Time flies. You know, it's I know, right? Yeah, it's isn't, cute. That, isn't that clever? Now, a, uh, a much a much uh, easier on the pocketbook investment and something that goes a long ways. Patreon.com slash today. I am enjoying the heck out of posting the unedited live stream versions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it even came in useful when I was getting trolled yesterday and I was able to just go site. I just like, man, I got the live stream recorded. I can just I'm like I'm sitting there arguing with this guy. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to time code link to when this guy's wrong. And it's great. Nice. <laughs> That's great. It really is fun, though, because in some ways the entire live. I actually think the entire live stream of last could be a show because yeah. like especially yesterday's last, the entire live stream just move, 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 move. There was like really no downtime and is a complete entire episode that doesn't get put into the final show because it would be gigabytes upon gigabytes and if you're a patron you can watch it just the three dollar level or above patreon.com slash today and if you're a cord cutter we have a cord cutter level that's kind of like a way of saying you know i jb is like it's like my netflix it's my hulu i want to keep them around give them some runway this supports all of our shows there's always kind of some kind of goodie going on for our patrons too we try to really give you guys some value patreon.com slash Today, you could also rep the JB swag. You want to throw yes. this on your laptop? We got some new stickers at jupiterbroadcasting.com/stickers. Yep, I just redesigned a Linux unplugged one. It is 
Uh, you know, I only ordered a, a small amount because I'm not sure how popular it'll be. Mm-hmm. But we had way too many just black and white stickers. So it's mm. dark blue Linux unplugged. Mm-hmm. And it has white. Join our virtual lug and lug baby and unplugged. blue background. Yeah, it's baby blue. Which, at the on the one hand, it kind of looks like a yeah, I like a baby sticker. But on the other hand, it's going to stick out. It's you know, clean. It's think clean about though. it. Think about it. Yeah. So uh, there's that. And then if you scroll down, there is also a. Faux show sticker. Hey And a Noah Switch Me to Linux sticker, which I have limited amounts on. You might get back ordered, uh, you know, depending on how fast they go. And um, also, I added the Ohio Linux Fest 2014 sticker. That one's free because I just want it out of my desk, <laughs> right? I think that's, I, so. Like, uh, so somebody, if they're getting a sticker order, if they just add that one to the cart, you're just going to include yeah. it in the order. Yep. That's a good one. That's yeah, actually please, now please, was, please was, do order a sticker and that one. Not yeah. Just that. But I mean, <laughs> we, we I will joke, fill yeah. your order if you just order a free sticker. But it would be cool if if you like maybe you know bought, now, I, like coverage. I, I might have gotten my history wrong, but in last I seem to recall if I was saying in last wasn't this one of the first stickers we started getting where like we got like a the next tear up in vinyl quality and we're like yeah. we're doing this from yes. now on. Yeah. yeah, and I ordered like 300 of them and Ohio <laughs> Linux Fest ended up being like maybe 100 people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I over-ordered. That's why I just want them gone. I've just been giving them out. So if you live in Ohio and want a red Ohio-shaped sticker that has you don't, the I mean, Jupiter Broadcasting logo and mentions your Ohio Linux Fest that happened in 2014, that is the sticker for you. <laughs> Check it out. A bunch of other stickers. for We have the Tech Talk Today sticker on there too. Yes, we do. JupiterBroadcasting.com slash stickers. And I'm going to give a mention uh, I, I think I plugged it at episode 16 last week. 17 of the rover log is out, and this is the one. This is the one where I drive into a tornado. And you know what was interesting uh, is, in retrospect, that was that could have got a lot worse because the tornado passed only a few miles ahead of us on the freeway. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is documented in there. Check it out. You can go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash rover. This is on the return, return trip in January from scale. Yep. Where that happened, and it was intense. Also, uh, I created a Instagram specifically for the rover logs. So oh, was that already done? Yeah, I linked it to you. Oh, it's yeah, okay. uh, Instagram.com forward slash the rover log, and uh, there's only one picture so far. It'll it won't be like populated all the time. You like won't when be I inundated, travel. but yeah, occasionally there will be some uh, mm-hmm. some hints as to what you might find in the next rover log. I'm working or... on that. Uh, so you know, I've been. I've been kicking around the Linux Plumbers Conference in November mm-hmm. about uh, going down there. Uh, I got to email is them. Is it in California? Uh, New that? Mexico. Oh, cool. I got to email them, though, and make sure they're good with press because uh, they generally, otherwise it's $400 to get in the door. Right. Um, <laughs> Rakai is saying that I should just include one for free in every order, the Ohio sticker. Well, right now I'm including the Linux Fest Northwest <laughs> sticker oh, yeah. for free. And, uh, yeah, every cool. order since, Still like, I don't know, order number seven. And good. I'm up to, like, 120 orders. So, yeah, I, that one is coming for free to everybody. Nice. But uh, no, not everybody cares about Ohio. So, so if you want and you get a sticker right now, you could you could get two additional free stickers. You have to add the Ohio one to your right. card because yeah. you might not want it. Yeah. And you'll also include the Linux Fest Northwest sticker. Yep, which I which have is about 50 more. So. custom art that we set up for, uh, we, we got done for each Linux Fest. Mm-hmm. So it's a unique sticker that we do for each year and... Uh, yeah. That'd be actually, can I? Can you give me a couple? Yeah. <laughs> actually, I am going to frame all the stickers. Oh, cool. Yeah, for like this year, 2016. That's These a good are the idea. stickers. That, I know. Yeah. yeah. Stickers know. are fun. Yeah. They are ridiculous. Yeah. And they're, you know, now that now that the vinyl ones, you can actually even, oh, you man. can even remove them without like having to like have them rip apart. Yeah. Like, I got a really nice. cool video of somebody opening their envelope. Really? Yeah, with stickers. They took and, a video? Yeah, and what's great is- We could have played that in the show. Yeah. I tape the stickers on the inside of the envelope so they don't shift around because if the envelope is a certain thickness, it requires more postage. So I, I kind of tape them, but the back, you know, not the not the front, obviously. Anyway, so I'm watching him undo it. He's like, what What did you do, Angela? <laughs> Talking to me in the video. Anyway, I just, I taped it to make it secure. There you go. So There you go. All right. Well, that's, now I want stickers. JupiterBroadcasting.com slash stickers if you do too. Thank you to the Mumble Room for joining us. It was great to see you guys. It is getting hot out, so I know it's woof. hot in her. Woof. So, Take off uh, your clothes. <laughs> if you need to cool down and hang out with the Tech Talk crew, join us on Mondays. Go to jblive.tv. There's a chat room embedded there. If you bang mumble, you'll get our server address. You just have to have a working microphone to join us, and we really do like that. If you want to submit any kind of topic or story or a Kickstarter of the week, techtalktoday.reddit.com is where you go. Don't forget to keep us going at patreon.com slash today. It's not just this show. It's all the shows. This is our thank you. And, uh, what? And also on YouTube, uh-huh. if you if you watch our videos through YouTube, click on the show more. I've added 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Quick links to everything by show, by social network, um, how to support, everything. Like, mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. super easy to find all of the subreddits, everything. Go there, click down on that, and click on the Just, links. what do they call it? Below the fold. Hit the show more. Really? I think it's That people... sounds naughty. <laughs> Below the wow. fold. <laughs> I guess so. No. I'm uh, just going to call it the show more area. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Details. <laughs> Click the show more link. Under the fold. Oh, that's what they call it. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here with uh, a really retro commercial. I think it's like from the early 90s. It's just been fun to play these. I got a couple more up my, actually, maybe only one more up my sleeve, but this is a classic. Thanks for joining us. See y'all back here next week. Yo, it's Kool Aid Man here with some wild changes to my all new Kool Aid Wacky Warehouse Mall. Hanging at the mall. The Wacky Warehouse Mall No, 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 parents allowed We've got a sitter for you Here at the Wacky Store This wild stuff that's new And the video arcade Where you'll fit right in Our magic shop Is incredibly strange Meet me, Great Blue Beanie For a tasty change Hanging at the mall The Wacky Warehouse Mall The Kool-Aid Wacky Warehouse Mall, the wackiest mall of all.